It's not fair to change CSGO's maps or gameplay midway through a major tournament, such as the one in Katowice a few weeks ago. But now it's ended, Valve is pumping out major updates for CSGO. We've got map updates, new content and gameplay changes, some of which I suspect are in response to what happened during the major. For instance, they've changed the loss bonuses yet again. It makes sense that you get a good amount of money for winning a round. You deserve to be rewarded for winning. But should the losing team be punished for losing? Surely losing the round is bad enough, but to be given less money to play the next one with will only make matters worse. A team that's behind will only become further behind. The game's way of trying to balance this has always been to give the losing team more money for every round in a row that they lose, until it gets to the point where they can buy decent stuff almost every round without needing to resort to desperate ecos and rushes. Once they win a round, their next loss bonus has always been reset down to $1,400 again. In 2017, Physic Cake worked out that with this system, simply winning both pistol rounds gave you a nearly 70% chance of winning the entire game. So in October last year, Valve upped the pistol round loss bonus from $1,400 up to $1,900 to try and get losing teams competitive again sooner, and to make the outcome of pistol rounds less important in the grand scale of things. And now we arrive at where we are today, and losing teams have been nerfed even less. Winning a round no longer resets your loss bonus down to $1,400. It just goes up or down by one category every time you win or lose a round. Say you lose a series of rounds, and your loss bonus goes up to $3,400. But then you win a round. This used to immediately reset your loss bonus back to $1,400. But now, it'll only have been reduced to $2,900 and two wins in a row will reduce it down to $2,400 and so on. This change will have the biggest impact on games where one team is losing a lot more than the other, like for anyone who had to fight Australis in the Major, for instance. Faro matches won't change as much, maybe an extra $500 or $1,000 here or there. This update will also help to naturally balance one-sided maps. Next up, a new kind of assist has been added to recognise the importance of flashbangs. If somebody dies while flashed, whoever threw the flash will get a shout out. This is a great way of rewarding team play and for acknowledging the importance of utility. This only shows up if nobody else got an assist on that player though. Sadly, they still won't get any points for it. You can see from here that it won't show up if you mistakenly flash your teammate who dies. It only shows up on flashed enemies. The AUG was the most popular CT rifle in the recent Major, so Valve has upped its price from $3,150 back up to its original $3,300 again. The question is, will people continue to use it? If not, then it shows how much price matters. People would rather get an inferior weapon and save $200, but if it's still used, well, that would be even more interesting. That would show that it should have been the favourite rifle of choice for years, but it took until 2019 and the pros to be using it before everybody gave it a chance. And the M4A1S has also been changed. While it and the M4A4 used to be equally popular, the silenced version has fallen out of favour in recent years, now a distant third behind the M4A4 and the AUG. So its ammo capacity has been increased from 20 to 25, and has more reserve ammunition too. This is big. It was always more precise and easier to spray with than the M4A4, but you had to sacrifice so much ammo capacity that people didn't think it was worth it. Moving from a magazine capacity of 30 down to just 20 was too big a drop to justify, and you'd find yourself running out when against multiple enemies. But 25? I can see people using it now. Let's see how the balance between the CT rifles changes, once the dust has settled. Valve admits that the shotguns were rubbish, and although they're probably still rubbish, they're at least a lot cheaper. The Nova has been given some wall penetration, and the Sword Off's range has been up to a more acceptable 1,400 units, which is now the same as the Mag-7. I still don't know how good it will be, but before this change, it was useless. Bullets would disappear into thin air long before they should have done. You couldn't even hit the broad side of a barn. So at least now you'll probably manage that. Following this update, the shotguns are among the cheapest non-pistol items in the game, and they all give you a kill reward of $900, making them an excellent choice if you're short on cash and don't mind lurking in a corner to try and get some cheap, close-quarter kills. C4 and enemies can no longer be seen on the radar through open doors, and the C4 should now always return to a position on the ground after it's been dropped somewhere that it can't be retrieved, which is a fix that I can safely guess came from Vertigo. The Prisma case I'll cover some other time in more depth. But 17 new community-made skins have been added to the game. The shuffle feature's a nice idea. It lets you select multiple skins for a single weapon, 
and a random one from the list will be selected at the start of every map. Great for players with a large skin collection that they're particularly proud of. Vertigo has had a few bug fixes. The run boost exploit to get to Bombsite B was not exactly a secret. It should have been blocked off for wingman mode, but wasn't, so terrorists found a way of planting at a site that CTs had no easy access to. Valve thanks you for your testing, but has patched it up. If you've had your games with Wingman ruined by this bug, then you can find comfort from the fact that any future attempts will result in the offending players plummeting to their deaths. And two doorways have been added. The first is near CT spawn and actually features a door, which I guess will make it easier to guard this room from. And the second is just a doorway and has been added to the back of A, which both restricts visibility from this spot and bottlenecks players pushing through this area from either side. There was an overpowered boost on this spotlight that let players see over into the site. It's still there, but the wall has been extended so you gain no visibility from the position anymore. But players can still boost either side of the doorway for a sneaky view over into the A site. RIP the generator that I shouted out for being a great bit of cover last video. It's been removed completely. And the climbable scaffolding has been shifted across ever so slightly, which will let you see ever so slightly further around into the site from here. The boostable concrete thing here has been made a lot bigger. This will stop players from falling off here from underneath and will give players on the top a bit more cover from the CT entrances. And being able to stand on this ledge was unintentional and has been clipped up. Also, previously in the lift shaft you could fall down here and survive. Not that you could do anything with it, move at all and you immediately died. But this has all been patched up, so no more jumping down lift shafts please. At this rate, this skyscraper will be done by Christmas. And last, canals. I thought they'd swap it out for another workshop map since Valve seems busy with Vertigo, but no, it's still hanging on in there and has had some changes to the B side of the map. These have been done to put less emphasis on the section beyond the river. This is most evident by having the site moved off the bridge and over into the nearer side room. And the outside passage, which was mostly used by CTs, has been clipped off. The map has always been lazy at blocking spots off, but this takes it to new levels. Seriously, Valve. You can say goodbye to this bit, this room and this alley here. The last two changes I can show nicely with little walkthroughs. Let's start with the terrorist's entrance to mid courtyard. Previously there was a route that came out in the far canal, but this is all gone and all that's left is the corridor leading up. And a doorway has been added to the top to allow for faster access to the courtyard and in turn, bombsite B. Though I think this helps CTs just as much as it does them since you'll have plenty of time to lob grenades right into it in the hope of catching rushing terrorists. And the second comparison is on the T side of river. The entrance used to be further along, but has been moved closer to where terrorists start. You go up the steps and come out at this room here. Bombsite B is just over there. And walking around this corner leads to the boost. Fans of this map will see that a number of corridors have been removed. Sadly, tributes to Benny Hill will no longer be possible. You'll now be able to jump from scaffolding into where Bombsite B used to be. From this comparison you'll notice that nothing has changed. It's merely a change to the clipping, since before you were unable to jump onto the top of this sign, even though you clearly should have been able to. And last, the radar is now a beautiful shade of carrot orange. 